Three, two, one. Hey, everybody, you are watching and listening to the We Are Rising podcast. This is your host, Andrew Benjamin. We got a special grappling jujitsu edition. Uh, that's why I'm wearing the Saku uh, rash guard. And uh, with us, we have Grant Bogdanoff, who will be one half of the English commentary for Unrival 2, which will be available on Fight TV this Saturday for us uh, on the in the United States, but I think it goes down Sunday, right? It's it's technically Sunday. Yes, in Japan time, it will be going down on Sunday. Yes, but well, Grant, thank you so much for talking. You know, last minute, you know, especially the week of, I appreciate you as always uh, taking yeah, the time. Yeah, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here again with you, Andrew. Um, I wanted to thank you for sponsoring my gym, Alma Fight Gym Life, here in Tokyo, Japan, for the year with the We Are Ryzen podcast. Uh, Great podcast, always interesting stuff for anybody interested in MMA, grappling, martial arts uh, from the land of the rising sun. And as you mentioned, I will be doing the English commentary uh, for this up and coming grappling show called Unrivaled here in Japan. And um, alongside uh, the venerable Stuart Fulton, many of you may know from uh, he does pro wrestling broadcasts, um, Pancrase, you know, MMA uh, quintet over there on UFC Fight Pass. So he is like the cream of the crop here. And I'll just be trying to learn from him uh, and enjoy my experience commentating. So is this unrivaled. your first time? I'm com- oh, sorry, I just want to ask. Is this your first time commentating? Yeah, no, this is ever? my first time live commentating. So I've done Unrivaled One was a show that was previously recorded last mm-hmm. year. And we did a, an English commentary for that um, on a recorded version of the show. But this time it'll be live. So everything will be happening in the moment. um, And it should be quite exciting. Yeah, but it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, You know, uh, you're the commentator, you steer how you want to who you want to talk about, or which of the matches you want to talk about. Yeah, man, I mean, unrivaled, um, just to give kind of a background, it's a new show. So people might not really know much about it. Um, So over here in Japan, uh, this show has started up in the past year year and a half um with so it's a submission grappling and they also do matches in the gi um and the rules are basically the same but in the gi if you throw somebody for epon as in a judo throw onto their back with momentum and control that ends the match right there just as it does in judo so there is that option as well as taking things to the ground uh, attacking legs attacking you know, gi chokes and things like that in the gi. And each match is 15 minutes. So with the objective being a submission, obviously, but there is like a very special point system where pulling guard um, leads to a, a deduction of two points. So even if you get good grips, like most people from an IBJJF background understand that pulling without grips leads to a penalty, but here, even, no matter how you pull, uh, you will get a penalty of two points against you. And it is the onus of attack is on the person who pulled guard. So yeah, in IBJJF, you must attack and pass the guard if someone's sitting down. But in this show, the person who's sitting down is the one who has to bring the action. So you're going to see a lot of furious butt scooting from some jujitsu players, I think. I'm 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 intrigued because I was reading the rules in English. I, I and I be honest, whoever they hired the English translator, to, um, I don't think did that good of a job because I was kind of confused. I was like, so wait, the, it seems I was like, okay, the match ends if it's if it is the epon, if it is the judo throw, but I wasn't so if I wasn't sure so sure if the translation was actually saying that or if it was just or if that meant because I know that so that's so at, at KIT I know that that's one of the ways that if it goes to overtime. Is that how you can uh, live a takedown or a judo throw? So it's kind of, is there a reason why they're doing, do you know why they're doing like that for the geese specifically? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you see the the big grappling shows on on Flow or uh, UFC Fight Pass, and you get these matchups where you have a jujitsu practitioner, right? Um, like a, a, a straight, a purist. You get a pure grappler like Gordon Ryan going up against a, uh, maybe like an MMA fighter or wrestler. Like, um, yeah, he he grappled against Josh Barnett years ago. I don't know why that's the one I thought of, but like Josh is not a pure grappler, right? 
he's a, a jack of all trades. Um, and the rules of quintet, like sub only, no points, kind of favor the grappler, right? The purist. So what Unrivaled is doing is making it so that even uh, a judo player with minimal jujitsu or grappling experience could beat a high level jujitsu player with the threat of Epon, right? So they're trying to level the playing field so that the the grappler doesn't win every time. So with that, the, the guard pull, right? A lot of jujitsu guys, they wouldn't want to stand with an MMA fighter or a jujitsu uh, judo black belt. They would want to pull right away. They will be penalized for pulling and run the risk of being held down by a top heavy judo player for 15 minutes and losing zero to two, right? Mm. So it's to stimulate action and it's to level the playing field across uh, the various fields of, of grappling, whether it's judo, sambo, um, MMA, wrestling, they not just jujitsu or grappling fighters, right? They, they encourage um, athletes from the other sports to fight here. And they had judo players at the last one. There were some nice epones there. They had uh, famous MMA fighters at the last one too, like Takeya Mizugaki, um, one of the best bantamweights ever to fight in the UFC. Um, and this this next show, it's going to be even bigger because they're bringing in three guys from the States in William Tackett and his brother, Andrew Tackett, and uh, Jacob Couch, the hillbilly hammer out of Pedigo fighting systems, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so I'm curious to know, as well, are you familiar with any of the Tackett's or Couch at all? Yeah, of course, man. Uh, the Tackett bros fighting out of uh, Fight Factory down there in Texas. Um, strong wrestlers, like great leg game, really mm. tough, good back takes. Um, and so Andrew Tackett uh, at last year's Nogi Worlds at Brown Belt ended up winning the championship. But on his way to the top, um, his hardest match of that day was against Kenta Iwamoto here from mm. Japan. Uh, two-time ADCC veteran, um, lost a very close decision to a uh, two-time champion. Um, what's the guy's name? J, uh, JT Torres. So Iwamoto is, is top level. And uh, yeah, he, he was just edged out by Andrew Tackett at, the last, at last year's Nogi World. So we will see a fight between William, the brother, and Kenta this time, which mm-hmm. you should expect fireworks. Mm-hmm. I forget what Andrew's a younger one, I think. Maybe. Do you happen to know? Oh, which one's younger? I don't know which one is younger, but um I can't well, I can't tell because they both have that Texan look where like you could be younger, but you look, you know, that Midwest look where like, eh, you could be younger, but I can't tell. You could be the older one, I can't tell. Um no, yeah, no, you know, no. to be honest, I thought they were twins, but I thought they were no, I originally thought they were twins. Brothers. As well. They're not twins, right? I, yeah. I feel like Andrew's younger. He looks younger. Yeah. Now it's interesting that you uh, uh, that the Tackett brothers are known for kind of being more wrestling based guys. I like to say I like to categorize them as wrestling based guys who are great at jujitsu, as opposed to like jujitsu guys who are like okay at wrestling and all stuff. So, do you think that this that unrival the type of rule set that uh, in the nogi, you think that it favors them more in in a, in a, in a weird way? Um, I, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I, I feel like their style is very strong under, under these rules. Um, being able to take down and wrestle, uh, is going to be very, very advantageous here. However, you have to look at, um, Iwamoto who has a very, very strong wrestling base. I mean, he arguably, he, he wrestled with JT Torres, right. Mm -hmm. And, and did well. And, and almost took him down. Like a lot of people would have considered it a takedown, but um, it's going to be probably an amazing stand-up war between those two. You look at Andrew. Um, Andrew is actually going up against uh, the younger brother of Ryzen lightweight champion uh, Satoshi Souza and um, Murillo Takeshi Souza. So that's going to be a great matchup. I don't know much about the um, the younger brother Murillo, but he comes from that bonsai lineage, you know. I was actually going to ask if, if you know, because I tried to look him up. You know, we don't know. Like 
obviously everybody people know about Satoshi. Everybody knows about o- older yes. Souza. Um, I think there's another brother as well, right? Isn't there? Isn't there a, another? The brother? the eldest brother runs the main academy in Brazil. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, but Murillo, I don't know. Like, I tried to find some stuff on him. Maybe I, I maybe I don't know if the uh, I tried to do a katakana his name. It didn't work. But like, yeah, I don't know. Is do you know anything about him that you can so, tell us? Yeah. Um. What I can tell you is he's a purple belt. Okay, he's young. Um. He isn't really out on the competition scene so much, but um. Last year, at the All Japan Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Championship, that's uh, basically the biggest tournament here in Japan that isn't run by an outside organization. Um, it's like the biggest domestic tournament. He smashed everyone at purple belt, won double gold. He, yeah, he smashed everyone. He submitted everyone. Was um, this a gi or no gi or both? This is gi. So okay. that's another huge question, right? Is being a, a traditional Brazilian um style practitioner like he you have to understand the wrestling might not be there the leg locks might not be there you know it is 2023 but those ancient kind of traditions of like you know if you touch the legs you're like what the fuck are you doing um or the the wrestling like so he's gonna have obviously good triangles good guard passing and stuff but like i i predict he won't I if Andrew goes for the legs on him, I, I think he's gonna get a broken knee really fast. Okay. I, actually, and that's what I want to clarify. So I know that this is kind of like a I don't want to say a hybrid, but it's kind of like a, a, a IBJF JJFF type rule set that you got here. But are is there any word? Is there anything about the leg locks? Is are certain is reaping allowed? Knee bars, heel hooks, all that stuff. Is that stuff uh, legal in all the matches? Yeah, yeah. So reaping, heel hooks, any any leg attacks. Um, the the thing is, so it's fifteen minutes, which is longer. Black belt IBJJF is usually ten minutes, but ADC is twenty minutes. So fifteen, it's like probably longer than most people are used to. Um, you get points for takedowns and then also positions. So if you if you get to like a pinning position, side control or north south, you're gonna get your points, um, and then also you get points for mount and back control. Which means that, in you can also get a point for a sweep, um, but if you, for example, are in the bottom of mount or bottom of side control and you bridge the guy over and get on top under an IBJJF rule set, that'd be zero points. But here in Unrivaled you would score points on that because you got to side control. You achieved the mm-hmm. position, right? As opposed to in IBJJF, it's not getting to side control, which gets you the points. It's passing the guard. So you don't have to pass the guard to get points here. So that's another interesting twist, um, as well as the fact that as in folk style wrestling, if somebody is in the bottom position, they manage to scramble to the feet and separate back to the neutral position, they get an escape point. Mm-hmm. So it, it really is like a mix of all these rules to kind of help level the playing field so that like jujitsu fighters can't just sit on their butt and kind of like win by, by advantages or something. They have to be aggressive. These rules are designed to increase aggression and the chance mm-hmm. of submission. I just want to go back to that, that rule you said that uh, you can't pull guard. Is that for gi only or is that like... Also no gi. That is for both. The okay. the difference in the rules between gi and no gi is just the epon. Okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So when you say pull guard, does that include also jumping guard as well? So if you were to jump and uh end up in the guard position, like yes, that would be a, a negative two points. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So when you say that, I wonder it's I don't know, because the Sozas, you know, we see you've seen Satoshi himself uh, jump guard clever jumps guard all the time and it, it went in his matches so it almost seems like Sosa here is at the disadvantage like yeah like in snogi uh might be the biggest match you know that he's had so far i have to i would have to say and sounds like i don't know like 
seems like the rules are against traditional, like people that are taught traditional, Gracie, whatever type of jujitsu you want to categorize it as. Does that? Does that yes, you you are exactly right with that analysis. And uh, the thing is with Marillo, obviously he's training with Satoshi and them. I I hope he's doing no gi. I hope he's training MMA with them to get his takedowns up. But um, honestly, like, yeah, I feel like he's coming in as a huge underdog. We'll have to see how the match goes. Like, he could pull off a triangle, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Anything could happen. But um, just based on, like, their their kind of records and what we know about the fighters, you know, a Andrew Tackett, on paper, should take this one handily. Uh, I just want to also just go back to uh, to, Iwa, uh, to the other Tackett and uh, Iwamoto. Have you ever uh, sparred or rolled with uh, Iwamoto before? Yeah, we competed against each other three times, two times in the gi, one time in no gi. Um, we train like, I don't know, I sat on average once a week now together. Um, we've been training together for like the past three years. Um, his, he's got a, a very well-rounded game. Uh, you know, his guard is hard to pass. He scrambles very well. He's got a very good leg game. Um, and his back attacks are phenomenal. Uh, and he has a great stand-up game. He was actually up here in New York. I, I believe he trained with Jason Rao for like a, like about a month or two. So whatever Indeed. like whatever like game he had before that probably is 10 times better now. Uh, yes. And oh, sorry, and he said ahead. about that training that uh, he had never rolled against anyone that good before. That's yeah, what everybody says good. when they when they go against Jason Rao. Yeah, they said he said that Jason Rao made him feel like his jujitsu was terrible. And that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, and, it, and he's from Igloo, which you know, Igloo, uh, you know, you know, has been a long-standing, you know, jujitsu school. Like up there with Carpe Diem, of course, Alma Fight Gym Life as well. But, you know, it's definitely you know, Igloo is one of the top ones. One of the top ones. Yeah. Where, like successful guys come from. Oh yeah, one of the you know the biggest teams here in Japan that turns out the top level guys, right? It's not a, a large association. It's just a single gym, but they have a concentration of like the best gi, the best no gi, uh, even the best female athletes here in Japan, which takes us to um, the second fight from the top of the card is Igor Tanabe versus the hillbilly hammer, Jacob Couch, right? Also fighting out of Igloo. Igor, uh, man, the guy's been doing jiu-jitsu for, for years. Uh, yeah, I was surprised. Good. He looks so much older, but he's actually younger than he actually so, looks. Yes, <laughs> he's, been, he's like 22, I believe, this year. It, um, he looks like 32. I thought that's not an insult, but like, I'm guessing that's just like the, the how jiu-jitsu ages some people versus others, maybe. Right, and he's he's very big, you know for a 22 year old um dude's probably like six foot one maybe maybe six foot i don't know he's a little bit taller than me um he's big sometimes he he balloons up to like 105 kilos which that's like 230 um in pounds and this this match will be contested i believe under 90 kilos so it'll be a bit of a cut for igor but um he can manage his weight well when it comes fight time. Uh, he's taken like worlds at the blue belt juvenile and uh, at adult purple, uh, gi and no gi, I think. And um, he's gotten into MMA recently. His last win coming over the Dutch kickboxing legend Melvin Manouf, uh, which was an incredible first round inside heel hook finish. Um, so he's got his hands in like various places right now but he's coming up against jacob couch this time uh in a grappling match it should be amazing to see how igor deals with jacob couch if jacob couch pulls guard you know igor's mm -hmm. mainly a guy who fights from the bottom not to say he can't take down or he can't pass he has phenomenal guard passing but uh normally he wins his fights from the bottom and uh attacking the back which jacob couch 
he's probably going to start pulling guard, looking for mm -hmm. false reaps, uh, you know, reverse De La Hiva style leg attacks. So that's going to be an extremely technical and entertaining match. I think it's I also should be mentioned that these two uh, uh, on the card probably have the best nicknames. Jacob Couch, the Hillbury and Hammer. They got Igor Tanabe, also known as Fat Ninja. And, you know, <laughs> that, that that's the type of, of, of names you put on the marquee. The Hillbilly Hammer versus Fat Ninja. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely Couch, you know, when it comes to the leg game, is up there with the best. Uh, and uh, probably his most well-known match was uh, actually uh, the loss against Gordon Ryan, which he took on like maybe, I think it was like a week's notice or something. I think it was supposed to be a week, maybe even less. But for somebody who didn't have, you know, I don't want to say that he didn't look, he didn't, he lost obviously, but for somebody who took Gordon Ryan short notice, listen, he could have done a lot worse or a lot, or not as, you know, could have lost a lot quicker, but he managed to actually put up somewhat of a competitive fight against Gordon Ryan, which is kind of like an award unto itself. Um, yeah, right. When you talk about Gordon, it's not about who can beat him. It's kind of about like who can cause him to break a sweat, right? Exactly. exactly Change yeah. that calm expression on his face. So yeah, Jacob Gordon. Couch, you know, he's a stud. And to be honest, this one, I don't know. It could go who either way. I was about to say, who do you think is like physically stronger, in your opinion, or like you know, Igor has the weight advantage, um, but Jacob Couch just seems to me to be physically stronger. So Igor's Igor's strength is not his physical prowess; it's his agility, his technique, and his speed. At that weight, he moves like a lightweight. Mm. at 90 kilos yeah that's that's his big thing it's not necessarily his strength right um so in that department yeah. i'd say jacob couch has the advantage it's going to come down to like who has a better strategy i believe it's going to be a close fight so it's going to come down to who understands the rules better right you can't just come into this and think you're going to submit the guy when your opponent is that good you got to think about the point game mm -hmm. uh, and if both of these guys are researching the rules because it's a new rule set, perhaps whoever understands the rules better might edge out the victory this time. I also want to ask as well, what happens if there's no points? Uh, are they doing advantages or, or points or just points for these matches? Yeah, no advantages, just points. Okay. Um, if it goes to the full, the uh, goes the full time limit, no points. Does it go to like the ref decision or is it a draw or did they say how that's going to happen? There will be certain penalties, like just for your basic stuff. So, um, like, like action. If if there's no action, there may be a penalty. Or if you like, and unsportsmanlike conduct and stuff like that. So in that case, the penalties will decide. But mm -hmm. uh, in the event of a draw, um, what did happen? Oh. Yeah, we've never seen a draw yet. Um, <laughs> it's well, you know, when you said this one's close, I'm like, this could potentially really go to a draw, like a like a like a, a stalemate between these two. Yeah, uh, it could, but um, the only way a draw could happen is if they keep it standing for the full 15 minutes, right? Because if somebody pulls guard or somebody gets a takedown, there will be points. Um, Yeah, We're glancing over the rules right now. So I mean, maybe it's one of those things that they're not they're, they're banking on not happening. So they're like, yeah, we're not gonna consider it because you know we got we got high level athletes. Oh, so it looks like there's an overtime. Oh, there is. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. So it, they will go into golden score. So. If, if there's a draw, it'll go into golden score, and the person who scores first will win the fight. It's kind of like that, judo in that sense. Okay, so so, so whoever gets the first takedown or the first throw or whatever or like that. Yes, absolutely. So, like in judo, if it's if it's a draw at the end, they just go into golden score, and whoever scores first, what what whatever point it may be, 
mm. wins. It seems like it seems like the create of that the uh, promoters of this are for, are judo guys who got who feel like they've gotten the the uh, wrong end of the stick of jujitsu. I feel like. I don't know. <laughs> I that don't know. definitely was taken into consideration. Like they, they looked at the various sports. Like they had that um, aspect from folk style with the escape, right? Mm -hmm. So they looked at the various combat sports uh, and took the best bits to to try to level the playing field, right? So we could get exciting matchups between mm. guys from different arts. Mm. And now they, I also know, I read the manual. They said it's a ring, but I know the first one was like, is it like a legitimate ring or is it just like an open mat? Yeah, that is, um, that was probably like a, a mistranslation. Uh, it's it's not going to be in a ring. It's going to be like an open mat and uh, just like normal grappling matches, right? Uh, and it will be four centimeters. So I give or take two inches of mat above solid concrete and the reason there will be such little padding is to maximize the impact from takedowns and throws i see okay gotcha okay so people you're gonna if you get uh if you get thrown if you get epon you're gonna feel it is it's, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be pretty it's not gonna be like these uh you probably have you probably have nice mats at uh alba you know the um they're nice and like have a thick patty on them, which you know don't hurt at all. So, but it sounds like yeah, they want you to feel it. They want you to. They want to make sure you 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 know your mistake. Yes. So you know, beware if you're fighting a judo guy. Um, I, I wanted to go on to any other fights uh, matches that you're looking forward to or that you can tell us more about. Yes. Yeah, so obviously, those big three. Um, those are going to be great, and then. Also on the card, there's a gi match between uh, Yuma Nomura of Pato Studio, which is like a, a really solid, um, mainly gi school here in Japan. And then uh, Seichiro Ito out of uh, Reversal Gym Grand Slam in Yokohama. So these guys are lightweights, uh, minus 65 kilos. So about like one, 145 in pounds. Um, and they both actually have MMA and judo backgrounds, but mm. currently uh, Nomura is more of a like a super like worm guard type bottom game gi guy, and uh, Ito is still or not so he's like in MMA. Um, yeah, he's fought for Ryzen. Uh, his last win he picked up in Pancras, um, and he is a multiple time quintet veteran. Also, my teammate on quintet, uh, Team Wolf under Michihiro Omigawa, and a quintet champion because we won last time so that should be a great match in the gi uh you know there's also shuya kamikubo who has went uh six and zero oh in one championship and he's now a free agent i believe trying to get into brave right now mm -hmm. um so he is a stud in terms of mma grappling he's got a great uh, choke from the back um very solid positioning game He's also and, got uh, very uh, scary cauliflower ears. Those yes, are the type man, of ears that look <laughs> like golf balls embedded in his ears. So. <laughs> uh, he can't even get those AirPods in, man. You know. Uh, <laughs> you, you, and, you, uh, you, you managed to survive not getting the, uh, the, the big yeah, I mean, not yet, the call. Right. Knock on wood. Huh? Yeah. His opponent, uh, Yoshioka Takahito, um, you know, mm. from that lineage, that Yuki Nakai lineage the traditional very traditional uh lineage here in japan this guy's a beast he's fought uh over in the states on uh who's number one i believe or um no no fight to win he's fought in fight to win and uh, he's won a lot of international championships kind of of that um hafa mendez and gi mendez generation of older guys so we got kind of like a young versus old here entertaining matchup should be very exciting uh and then, yeah, so as far as that goes, those are the fights I'm looking forward to most. Everything on the card should be entertaining. Got lots of, uh, you know, clashes of styles, aggressive guys, leg lockers, wrestlers, should be awesome. So if anybody's in Japan, though, the pay-per-view information, uh, it'll be on a different broadcast. Um, so check out the Unrivaled Twitter account for either the Japanese broadcast or the uh, 
outside of Japan broadcast, just to make sure you guys can tune in. Sunday, February 26th, this week, it should be amazing. Actually, if you're also, if you are in Japan, and I know that uh, Japan is open now, if you happen to be, it's in Tokyo, I think, right? They're doing the Tokyo area? Yes. So if you are here and you want to come, uh, you can buy tickets. So 5,000 yen uh, for general seating, 8,000 yen for ringside. Um, it is going to be in the Futako Tamagawa uh, area. So that's like a really, really nice kind of business uh, shopping area in Japan, which even if there wasn't this show, I would recommend going there. I really like it. Um, is it like check Ginza? It out. I, never, I never heard this area. Is it the sound yeah, like Ginza it's almost? Not, it's not like the most popular for for foreigners, like for tourists. But as far as like people living in Japan, it's a, a really popular spot to go on the weekends and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of it's close to my gym. Uh, so if anyone's in the area, you want to stop by, just hit me up. Um, Alma Fight Gym Life in Tokyo, Setagaya. Yeah, and uh, also as well, I, I believe that there is a, I I forgot which tackets, but uh, and Couch are doing a seminar as well Friday yes. in conjunction with this show. Friday yes, and Saturday, um, right? It's going to be Friday, so the sem- or okay. Thursday, I think actually. Um, to give those guys a little bit of time to prepare. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that seminar, yep, it's going to be February 23rd on Thursday. It's going to be William and Jacob. Uh, okay. Yeah, so starting at 1 p.m., and then it'll be in two parts, ending at 5 p.m. Uh, I would highly recommend anyone in Japan right now to go to that. Like, it's going to be kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Yeah. Um, that and, is also, uh, yeah, sorry, that is going but, to be in uh, Meguro, which is a different um, mm-hmm. ward here in Japan. But check out the Twitter of the Unrivaled official Twitter for any uh, uh, details on that. And also the uh, the website as well. The website, again, pretty good English for the most part, not the rules part. So skip the rules part, unless you're competing. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're in the English part of the website. Other parts of the English website are actually pretty good. The other question I got to ask is, might we see you on Unrivaled one day? Ah, yeah, you know what? Um, that was something that I'm really interested in. Uh, but I got this commentary gig, right? So maybe we would have to throw it back to Meta Morris, where Jeff Glover stood up from the commentary booth, took off his clothes, and jumped into the ring for a match, right? I would love to do something like that. Um, or maybe I could get like the first fight of the card. And then uh, Kenta Iwamoto could commentate the first two fights. <laughs> I do my match, I get ready, I go back to commentary, and then he goes and fights the main event or something like that. But yeah, I'd love the. I'm. I would be really strong under this rule set. But I know you got the judo background, you got the wrestling yes. background, and you got the obviously the jiu-jitsu background. So it seems like if I had known better, you made the rules for the for this uh, in arrival, and you're the uh, man. The uh, wizard behind the curtain, so to speak, the man, be- the man behind the curtain who's who created Unrivaled. You know what? Uh, actually, I did fight under these rule sets once. They did like a, a pre Unrivaled show, and I was actually the first fight ever on under this rule set here in Japan. Um, and another thing that I utilized in that match is like if you're in a submission and you lift the guy up. It's, it gets restarted on the feet, and you get two points for that. That's all. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Right. It's to simulate the slam, right? If you could essentially show that you can lift someone up, you're showing that you could slam them. Okay. And uh, but when so you they say reward lift, you. Do you mean picking up with the – like, like you can lift somebody, like, through butterfly guard potentially as well, or you just it, talking it about, like, a submission. Okay. It must be a submission. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be a submission. must be in somebody's submission – like in a okay. triangle yeah. or in an arm bar or in a buggy choke and then lift them up. I see. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. And okay. this is like, um, so this is the situation in which slams are not going to happen because they stop it and stand you up. If it's not a submission, you can slam the guy from any position you want. There was actually a, a competition. I forgot what it was. 
that just happened on the East Coast. Um, but it was funny because they actually gave you points if you slammed. And there was a video that went viral where some guy got caught on triangle. So he just kept on slamming the guy, slamming mm. the guy. And you just saw the counter, the point counter going like two points, four points, six points. Uh, I don't know. I don't like slams. I've been slammed. It hurts. It probably would, would suck even more under this two like centimeter. This, this is this, this hard on top of solid mat. concrete. Yes. So yeah, I would, I would hope that doesn't happen. I hope that doesn't happen to anybody, you know, because that would be, that would be very painful. Uh, the other question I have for you is Ryzen 2023. Anything you can say, or I guess hints, I'll say. Yeah, I'm training hard right now. We're talking to Ryzen right now. That's about all I can say. Um, but I, I'm looking to fight uh, first mm -hmm. half of this year. And actually, also, but also, and going back to like the grappling as well, what's interesting is that you started your jiu-jitsu career in the United States. Then you started then in Japan. Now that Japan is opening up, do you see more? Do you think Japan will will try it like now that everything Japan's a little bit more open now? Do you think we could get Japan could get more foreigners like this? Like you think that that this can be the constant going? You know, getting people like Jacob Couches or the Tackets or whoever to come in and do these high level grappling matches that we could that couldn't be done for a good a solid three years. Yeah, so that is a great question, and what I'm hoping is that this is just the start of like the the flood of grappling um international superstars fighting in the land of the rising sun right uh, as far as amateur tournaments go abu dhabi grand slam tokyo is set to come back to japan uh at the beginning of next year um the ibjjf is rumored to come back to japan this year asian open large extremely large and popular tournament uh guys like keenan cornelius and have come to compete there um i saw his match against shrek i know that i know <laughs> yes yes shrek also you know a beast shrek amazing guy um yeah it's gonna i hope this show can kick it off my only worry is with the budget so can they make grappling profitable it's tough, you know. Are they going to sell enough pay per views? Are they going to sell enough tickets? Did they get enough sponsors to pay for the the location, to pay for the fighters' um, pay, staff, uh, you know, everything involved? Um, would I love to see Unrivaled on Flow Grappling or UFC Fight Pass? Yes, but they really have to show up with this show, and uh, and keep the momentum going in order to get there, you know. And I believe that they can do it. I believe it's a really great show. They got great matchups, um, and it's going to be exciting. I just want to also say that I, that the, I guess, uh, jujitsu community in Japan is very passionate. You got people like Jujitsu Nerd. I think he runs. I think he runs KIT, right? Does he run? KIT? Yes, the same guy behind Jujitsu Nerd is is yeah. the guy behind uh, KIT, which is the kind of like gi super fight yeah. um, promotion in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy is Hashimoto Kinya. He's a black belt under Yuki Nakai. Um, he's an OG of jiu-jitsu. We're talking like 20, 30 years in the game. Um, and he's basically the guy for jiu-jitsu media in Japan. Yeah. And, 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 and it seems like there's always some new jiu-jitsu thing popping up. Remember... Uh, Imanari had his that thing that he did. I forgot what it was called like a few months ago. It was kind of like a combat. Imanari role ecstasy. No, IRE, Imanari role ecstasy. Um, you had this, KIT. I think KIT also had another, like a spinoff as well, right? Or something like the more, like the more amateur um, or, or less. The, there was an ART. ART, that's it. Is, yeah, right. it's separate from KIT. Oh, but, it is, okay. Uh, but uh, Hashimoto is like involved in that. And ART is very similar to KIT, but um, like Unrivaled, they have like the main show for the pros. And then mm -hmm. they also have the, the amateur show 
ART challenge, which people mm. can, um, anybody can apply to. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And then, yeah, we got ones doing their thing with Mikey Musin Mechie and Danielle Kelly. We got Gordon Ryan, obviously coming up against Philip Pena. Um, and so, no, it seems like grappling is on, on a track. It, it, there's a track there. I don't know. It's yeah. I don't, uh, it's, I feel like it can be something. I don't know how, but I feel like it can, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you agree with that or you see it differently. You know, someone's no, been in this I game agree for so long. With you. Um, we are in kind of like the nascent stages of grappling where we have to nurture it and support it and invest in it, uh, lest it wither away and die, right? So this could either be the beginning of something great or fizzle out into a failed dream. So it's up to like the fighters to put on entertaining matches, uh, the promoters to, to make those matches and provide like the locale and the eyes. And then of course the fans, you know, get involved, go watch the shows, uh, get to know your fighters um, and just raise, continue to raise the level of popularity of grappling and, and the skill level in, here in Asia, Japan and all over the world. I'll definitely say, I think it's definitely got the years of, you know, when two guys went to the ground and the audience booing, I think that's kind of a thing of the past now, or it's not as prevalent as much. I think definitely grappling is on, like you said, it's in the nation state. Depending, you know, has to be nurtured. I don't know about that. I'm not on the business side of this stuff. So, but, you know, it sounds like there is a lot of good people like Hashimoto and people behind uh, Unrivaled, you know, they seem to, hey, we already got Unrivaled too. Listen, that that just means good good success for potentially, you know, three or four, however, how many, however many more they want to do. So it's at least good. Two is good. Um, yeah. So I, I got to uh, also uh, let you plug, uh, you got anything coming up or anything Alma Fight Gym Life or anything that, else that you want to plug, Grant, before you head out? Uh, we got some of my my fighters here um, in Japan, Koki Hirasawa, going to uh, fight in the main event of Road FC out in Korea um, the weekend after next. So, I, I'm, my bad. This this weekend, um, he's going against Yang Jong, who has finished Shoji uh, via back choke and uh, Uoi full swing via left hook in his last two fights in Ryzen. So that's going to be a big match coming up for my boy. Uh, wish him the best of luck. We got my other guy, uh, Hikaru Yoshino, MMA pro record of 12 and 2, um, in talks right now with UAE Warriors for another huge matchup happening in March. Stay tuned. We got Yuya Aoki. He is our rooster weight, who last month placed third at IBJJF European Championships. Um, he's coming up KIT next month, March 5th, in a super fight matchup against a MMA fighter. So exciting matchups across the board. And then obviously me right now talking with Ryzen. Hopefully I can tell you guys more soon. Uh so uh your your uh your rooster weight soon. I forgot what was his name again? Yuya. Yes, Yuya Aoki. Oh yeah. So um you you KIT, is that still on Tiget or is it on Bima now? I don't have the Tiget app anymore, so I don't know what KIT does anymore. Yeah, KIT, um, I believe it's going to be on Tiget again, but uh, you guys have to check my my social media and stuff for, for the details. I'll be post. I already posted a little bit today, so, and I will continue to post about that, so please stay tuned. Yes, and for everybody who wants to uh, get uh, uh, get Unrivaled 2, outside of the United States, available on Fight. Uh, I think the price I saw was $19.99, but it's also on the Fight. Plus, which is kind of like your subscription service, which is cost less. So either one, either one's good. Fight Plus, or you can just buy it, uh, uh, and you get it. You get to keep it forever. Um, that's the great thing about Fight. And yes, got great matches, great great competitors. This is definitely is a show that I am looking forward to. I cannot wait to see, uh, especially the top three matches. But uh, Grant, thank you so much. Good luck in your uh, commentary endeavor this weekend. Uh, you and Stewart, I know we're gonna kill it. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to watch this this show. Thank you, Andrew. I always appreciate the support. Always appreciate the interviews, and uh, I will talk to you again soon. Yeah, no problem.